I'm going to be reading a um book on manners, I guess. And to make it more interesting, I'm going to be adding commentary and I guess post it on YouTube eventually. Okay, here's where it goes. First, a note about you. The first rule of not being a dick to others is don't be a dick to yourself. Yeah, because I'm totally always being a dick to myself. If you're vicious to yourself, you're probably going to be vicious to others. Actually, I'm usually the voice of reason and, um, uh, voice of reason and logic. Yeah, that's it. And if you're vicious to others, other people will be vicious to you. So don't walk around hating yourself or being a negative Nancy. That doesn't help anyone. Actually, I'm quite positive. Um, most of the time. Let's say you just went shopping and bought an awesome new jacket. You like it so much that you don't want to take it off. So you keep it on even after you come indoors. Some people might find that unusual and ask you why you're wearing a jacket inside. Why are you wearing a jacket inside? How do you react? Um, to somebody yelling that, I'd probably be wondering why they're yelling something like that. Also, that's a bit rude, especially if there are other people around. If you feel insecure about yourself and your fashion choices, you might become defensive. Actually, no, I'd probably just be like, okay, I guess um, I'll be going. But if someone doesn't appreciate your style sensibility, let your positivity prevail. Be proud of who you are and stand up for the choices you make. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably do that anyways, or just ignore them. If they want to be negative, they can be negative. Where are you wearing your jacket inside? Because this jacket is red. <laughs> Sarcastic Chris response, yes, that's perfect. If you want to wear your jacket inside, then wear your jacket inside. If some people think they can survive without a nice heavy jacket, best of luck to them when the long winter comes. Okay, comparing yourself to others. It's easy to focus on your our own problems and shortcomings. If we're feeling bored or unhappy, we can't hide that reality from ourselves. Where, where he is? What? Where he is, it's very difficult to see what other people are trying to keep under wraps. So upon seeing a boy playing ping pong, you might think my life's so boring I and dull. I'm so unhappy. If only I could play ping pong like that boy, things would be different. There are a lot of nice things in the world. Actually, I'm not really that fond of ping pong. If he's happy, then good for him. I can do something else. Maybe write a comedy book like this. Or do a reaction, like I'm doing. And a lot of smiling people, but if you dwell too much on what you don't have, it's easy to feel inadequate. The thing is, the other person could be thinking the same thing about you. We don't really have any idea what's going on in another person's life. What looks great from the outside might not be so great on the inside. Yeah, I actually already know that. Comparing yourself to others distracts you from focusing on yourself and what really matters to you. We have to de de define success for ourselves and appreciate our own talent. We have to find satisfaction in our own growth and achievements. And I do. I do all of that. Yep, I write books 
no, I'm in fan fiction, still writing, and I am quite proud of what I do. Not just of fan fiction, but also other things. After all, even when someone seems to have it all with a hit TV show, piles of money, veins filled with tiger blood, and a goddess on each elbow, deep down that person might be depressed flailing and on the brink of an epic meltdown, even those who have it all are missing things too. Yeah. <clears throat> Remember, success doesn't always bring happiness, and happiness isn't always easy to spot. Yeah. Well, actually, if you're somebody like me, succeeding and being productive... Actually, getting stuff done that you're proud of is something that makes you happy. The world is a big, huge, enormous place covering with billions and billions of people. But guess what? You're totally unique. Dystopian future cloning technologies aside, you're the only version of you there will ever be. Embrace it, nobody is perfect, so don't worry about your so-called imperfections. Yeah, I have flaws. <laughs> but I usually laugh at them. I mean, I just kind of did. Imagine what would happen if some future version of yourself traveled back through time to talk to you today. I'd probably... Oh, wait, that would actually be kind of cool. That would mean that I'd eventually get a time de time travel device. Maybe a TARDIS. That would be cool. How embarrassing is that? Instead of obsessing over your latest pimple, do everything positive. Join a Sunday afternoon kickball league. I don't really like sports, so I wouldn't really be happy with that choice. Write the graphic novel you've been talking about. Yeah, I am writing what I've been talking about. Or really apply yourself at next year's science fair. I'd probably not do very good. Probably blow the whole fair up or something. Feelings are the mind's and heart's way of telling us some things we need to know, like that we love someone, or that spiders are creepy and evil. I kind of disagree. I don't actually have anything against spiders. As long as they're not crawling on me, they're just fine. But sometimes we don't know why we feel the way we do. Sometimes our emotions seem totally out of proportion to whatever caused them. That's a sign we need to look more closely at what's going on. Don't ignore or dismiss your feelings or you might end up doing something you regret. Yeah, that's already happened to me before. Yeah, multiple times, I guess. The instance, say you're at a friend's party, everyone is having a great time, but you're not. This is the worst. I usually just stand around, so mm, nothing would really, there's not much that would be going on with me. Maybe you blame the host's dog. Um, I don't really see what the dog would have done to... Um, well, maybe you just have a problem if you're blaming the dog. Who keeps staring at you with those big puppy eyes? But who runs away every time you try to pet him? But is the big... But is the dog really the problem? Take some time to examine why you are feeling the way you do. First, identify how you feel. I don't know. <laughs> Next, look for possible causes for your feelings, like this book. Then understand the connection. 
Finally, try to solve the problem in an active way. Mm. Yeah, but uh, an active way. No, don't kick the dog. That would probably be bad. No. If you stuff your difficult emotions into a box and knock them up, you'll never figure out what's making you unhappy. You'll keep experiencing those negative emotions because you won't be interacting with the real problem. I'm actually doing just fine the way I am, like this. And sure, working through your emotions can take a lot of time and energy and perhaps a few visits to a professional therapist. Actually, the funny thing is I'm sort of like a therapist to other people, sort of more like a listening ear. I also just noticed that you can't spell therapist without the rapist. <laughs> but you're worth it. If you don't have enough money for a doctor, find a friend to talk to. It can make all the difference. Yeah, and I actually do talk to my friends. Honesty is the best policy. Yeah, but I can think of multiple scenarios in which honesty probably isn't actually the best policy. Like saying, without honesty, none of the strategies described in this book are going to get you very far. Of course, being honest with yourself is easier said than done. It would be dishonest not to admit that. I guess. Still, don't you know deep down when you're pretending to be someone you're not, or when you are just putting on a show to imp impress others, if you're pretending to be something just to, so people will like us, us, you mean me, because just for people to like me, not like us, you're breaking the fourth wall book, that's setting ourselves up for trouble. It takes a lot of energy to keep that show up 24-7, plus... If you overstate your talents, you'll look you'll only look foolish later. Yeah, because I'm that awesome. Totally the best awesomest person around. That's me. <laughs> it started. Maybe you want to be a kung fu master, like this young lady. But if you aren't there quite yet, don't pretend to be. Yeah, if you try to pretend like you're a kung fu master and challenge a kung fu master, you're probably going to get hurt. Admit that you're still learning. People understand because, think about it, they're probably in the process of learning something too. I know, and I'm actually already practicing on my, on my talents such as my drawing skills and my writing. I'm doing pretty good, I think. If you don't know something, don't be afraid to ask someone who might know. Or you could just look it up, you know, the internet is right there, it's quick and easy. People are naturally attracted to those who are curious and humble and who seek to prove themselves, whether that involves hand-to-hand -hand combat or not. <clears throat> yeah. Well, being a um, Kung Fu Master would be really cool, but yeah, and there are other things that I'm better at. Okay, so that appears to be where I had to stop. So, who knows, maybe I might do this again next time I have to read the book. But until now, hope you enjoyed, and good, uh, sorry. This is also a blooper video, apparently, and I guess have a good day. Bye.